Hi guys. Hello. Is anybody there? I see one person. Hi, that one person. I see you. Who are you? Hi, Janet. How was your day? Hi, Michelle. How was your day? Hi. How was your day, Michelle? How was your day, Janet? How was your day, Calvin? Hi, Mom. How's your day, Mom? God's good. All the time. Right? During the good times and bad times. God is good. Hi, Estrella. How's your day, Estrella? Good. I like those thumbs up. Very good, Mom. Yes, he is. He is good. My day was good. My back's hurting again. <laughs> this time it's the other side. Hi. I'll be okay. We're gonna pray and then we're gonna get into the word. Let's pray for each other. Let me ask you a question. What do you need prayer for? Type in your prayer request. I'm gonna pray for you. Pray for my back that I could be totally healed. My back's acting up again, but I'll be okay. At least I'm not having back spasms anymore. I'll be fine, Mom. Don't worry. So, does anybody need prayer for anything? Write down your prayer requests. Type them down, and, and then we're going to pray. I know some people are going to be joining us later. But uh, I want to be respectful of your time. So, we're going to pray. Have you guys heard of the Axe Prayer? Pray for my nephew and his girlfriend. They are pregnant. Is your nephew pregnant? I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, we're going to pray for her. God loves the little babies. He loves all the children. So we're going to pray for your nephew, the baby that's on the way. Anybody else have prayer requests? Any prayer requests? Feel free to type in your prayer request. I just took a hot bath, mom. That helped a little bit. So, we're gonna pray for Estrella's nephew. Do you need prayer for anything else? And I got the heating pad on my back right now, mom. Okay, we're gonna pray and um, I know you guys have prayer needs. Could you close your eyes and bow your head? Father God, we just thank you for being here this hour. Uh, I just wanna move out of the way. I want you, Jesus, to be the guest. Um, well, I'm asking, and we're praying that you'd be the guest speaker, that I could just be your, your vessel. Uh, you are the potter, I'm the clay. Uh, apart from you, Jesus, I could do nothing. And so I need your help to teach this uh, as we get into your word. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, you talked about prayer quite a bit. And so I just pray that we could all become prayer warriors 
and that we could just grow in our in our prayer life. That our, our, our that our relationship with you could be richer and deeper. That we could actually hear from you when we pray. We could hear that still small voice, that Holy Spirit, that you could speak to our hearts and minds when we pray every time. I pray for uh, Australia's nephew. Just they have a baby on the way. I just pray that the baby will come out healthy. And um, I pray that they'll recognize that all good things come from above, and and children are are not just a thing, but uh, you created babies in your own image. You created well, all of us in your own image. Help us remember that, that men and women are created in the image of God, and life is a gift. So we just pray for the, the baby that's coming, for a safe delivery, and we pray that Australia's nephew and girlfriend will come to know you as personal Lord and Savior. Maybe at Hope City Church. Maybe at home. I, we don't care how it happens, but we pray that uh, this family will, will know you, Father. Will know you, Son. Know you, Holy Spirit. So we just thank you, God, as we get into the Word. Uh, please bless this time. May we feel your presence. Amen. So, we're also going to pray for I'll be praying for your uh, depression, grief, and anxiety. Um, so we're going to get into the Word. Uh, one thing I know about prayer, I, I learned this years ago. It might help you. It's called the Acts Prayer. A-C-T-S. A, you acknowledge who God is. Or sometimes we, we call it a door. Adore God. So sometimes, I, even though I'm a pastor, I don't know what to pray for sometimes. And and this might help you. I, I, I pray the Acts prayer. So I start off by acknowledging who God is. A, He's Almighty God. He's my friend. He's my Savior. He's my Lord. Uh, he's my companion. He's my Father. So I acknowledge who God is. Then C, I confess my sins. I I Pray for those that have sinned against me. T, I thank God. And I was talking to Josiah just about an hour ago. Go, how do you thank God? And he's like, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. See, we, we could thank God by worshiping Him, by praising Him. So there's many ways we could thank God. Thank you, God, for salvation. Thank you for the Bible. Did you know, like, there was a time where there were no Bibles available, you had to go to the synagogue or the temple and they'll roll out a, a giant scroll and they'll read the scriptures only at the church or the temple. But now everybody has access to a Bible. It wasn't always like that. But now we have God's Word virtually in our lap. So we can thank God for His Word. We can thank God for our friends, our family, for our church family. We can thank God for the Holy Spirit, for Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. There's so many things we can thank God for. And then S is supplication. We start asking God for what we need. And so the Acts prayer has helped me maybe uh, try to memorize that. A-C-T-S. Acknowledge God, uh, who He is. C, confess your sins or if you need to forgive somebody. That's the time to do that. T, thank God, and S, supplication. Ask God for whatever you need. If you have your Bibles now, I want you to go to Matthew 5, 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. I trust you have your Bible with you. If you don't, please go get your Bible real quick. I'm not going anywhere. If you have your Bibles, let me get a thumbs up. If you have your Bible with you. I'm going to have a bunch of questions for you. Maybe you might be able to answer some of the questions. So the title of this Bible study is How to Pray Jesus' Way. So Jesus wants to teach his disciples how to pray. <laughs> I think the reason why the Lord wanted us to know how to pray so we can have a deeper relationship with God. 
So he's saying, okay. And actually one time the disciples asked Jesus, how? How do we pray? How shall we pray? Interesting. Just think about it. The disciples didn't ask, how do we perform miracles? How do we share our faith? How do we walk on water? How do we cast out demons? How do we perform the miracles that you're performing, Jesus? No, they asked Jesus a simple question. How, how do you pray? We, we see you every day praying to God. It looks like you have a good relationship with the Father. Can you give us some pointers? Can you give us some tips on how to pray? And so here in this passage, Jesus gives his disciples tips some advice on how we shall pray. So what is prayer? I'm glad you asked, Mom. Here is prayer. This is a good definition of what prayer is all about. It's a conversation with God. Prayer is a dialogue. It's, it's not a monologue where you just like start talking to God about... Yes, we, we talk about to God with what's going on in our mind and heart. But there's a time in prayer where we, we pause and we allow God to speak to us. That's the hardest part for prayer. Is to just to stop and just to listen to the Spirit of God. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds. And I know sometimes when you pray, the Holy Spirit will lead your prayer. So that's God speaking to you through your prayer. Have you ever like closed your eyes and you start praying maybe in public or alone and the words start coming? They start flowing. The Spirit of God helps us to pray because sometimes we don't know what to pray about. But when we close our eyes and we start praying in faith, the words come. Prayer is rebellion against the status quo. Let me say that again. Prayer is rebellion against the status quo. So when we pray, um, we're, we're saying, God, change me. I don't want to be like this anymore. Change our world. Change our president. Change our, our circumstances. Get rid of this coronavirus. We, we start praying against temptation. or We start praying for our neighbors. We, we start praying for people that hurt us. We pray for our enemies. So prayer is a... A rebellion against the status quo. Prayer changes things. The word prayer in Greek, it means to prostate. It's, it's, it's a picture of somebody laying on the ground before God on their knees. Actually, their face on the ground prostrate before the Father. Have you ever prayed like that where you just got on all fours and you start praying? You get on your knees and pray that's a beautiful way to pray is every so often we need to get on our knees and just and give God the praise and the honor he deserves you don't always have to pray that way you could pray while you're driving to work just keep your eyes open you could do prayer walks i love doing prayer walks there's different ways to pray i remember the first time i prayed i was just like uh, nine years old and I just felt compelled to pray and I, I and you guys heard this story before some of you have heard this story I closed my eyes and I said God I believe in you believe in me and when I said that prayer I felt the Spirit of God come upon me and I felt God's peace so I don't know if there's a wrong way to pray as long as you pray with heart and you pray with sincerity. And so, what's your definition of prayer? Type in. Can you type in your definition of prayer? I'm waiting for you. What is prayer? How do you define prayer? I'm waiting for you. Anybody? So Jesus talks to uh, his disciples about prayer, how it looks like in the real world. Matthew 6, 5. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, 
The word hypocrite means pretender. It's the Greek word for theater actor. Uh, so back in the Lord's day, they had they didn't have movies, but they had the theater. They had live acting. And the Romans and the Greeks, they would put masks on. And they would act. Some of the males will pretend to be different characters, different people. They were acting and they were doing it to get applause. They were doing it to be in the spotlight. And so Jesus is telling the Pharisees and he's telling the disciples here, don't be like the pretenders. Don't, don't pray out loud so everybody could see you, so you could get the applause. So everybody could, oh wow, look how holy she is. Look how holy he is. He's praying out loud. Sometimes you will be called to pray out loud in front of others. And don't be afraid to do that. But always do that for the audience of one. Remember who you're praying to. You're praying to Jesus. You're not praying to the audience. You're not doing it to look good in front of others. You're doing it because you, you love God and, and you want to have a relationship with Him. It's hard to have a, a deep relationship with God if you don't spend time with God in prayer. I know we all need to spend more time with Him in prayer. But it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality of time you have with Him. You can have five minutes with God, it, it could be a beautiful time. Maybe, but spend five minutes every morning with God in prayer. Maybe it's ten minutes. Jesus doesn't tell us how long we need to pray, but we do need to spend quality time with the Lord. And we could take with we could take the Lord with us, or He's actually already with us. But remember Him throughout the day. Pastor Coco taught me um, have these breath prayers throughout the day. So it's a quick little breath prayer. Like I used to say these breath prayers when I was in college. I'm getting ready to go a class to class, and I'll say, Hey God, I say, Lord, would you help me with this my next class? Give me the guts to, to stand up for you. Give me the guts. Uh, to be your salt and light in class today. And so I'll say a little breath prayer when I was getting ready to go to my next class in college. So you could say these breath prayers throughout the day. That way you're always in communion with the Father. That's, that way you're always, uh, you always remember that Jesus is with you throughout the day, not just in the morning when you're praying, but throughout the afternoon and throughout the night. So Jesus tells his disciples, first of all, don't be like the, the pretenders, the theater actors. Are there pretenders in our world today? Let me share this story with you. I, I love sharing stories because Jesus was a storyteller. So when I was in high school, we used to go to this church in South, Sacram South Sacramento called Victory Outreach. So my brother invited me to this church. Uh, it was a pretty good church. A lot of young people went there. And so one Friday night, the pastor had an altar call. He's like, if you need prayer, come forward. I want to pray with you. And he, had, he, just, he just got them preaching a really good message. And uh, we, me and my friends, we looked at each other. You guys want to go forward for prayer? And, and we all agreed, let's go forward and pray. So I'm at the altar and I, I had a sweet, beautiful time at the altar. I felt the presence of God and my brother felt the presence of God. And I had a friend, I'm going to call him Tony. He's at the altar and, and he's like very emotional and I'm like, I was like stunned. I was like, Tony, he's getting touched by God tonight. And I was like, I was, I, I was like, I was happy that Tony, because Tony really needed God in his life. We all need God, but Tony, uh, I never saw him go forward. This is the first time he's at the altar and he's praying. He looks all emotional. It, it, it looked like he, I couldn't tell if he's crying or not, but I could tell he's like, He's really like at the altar, like uh, having a good, t a good time in prayer. And so the service ends and then we're, we're getting ready to leave the church. We get in his car. My friend Tony had a, a nice car system. And he's like, hey, Jose Abel, you guys ready to go to Broadway? And I was like, yeah, I guess. I, I just felt uncomfortable. 
uh, I was I was still young in my faith, and so I I, I couldn't say no, and so he, he takes us to Broadway, and that's when everybody used to cruise Broadway, and everybody had their nice cars, and they're cruising Broadway, and then he starts playing uh, in between the sheets by the Isley Brothers, and and you know that song it's about it's about sex, and it's about you know intimacy, and so he's playing this song in between the seats and he's playing it so loud that so everybody can hear it and I'm like and he's all listening to his music and I, in my mind I'm like we just got out of church what, was that just an act I just saw you you know you were with me at the altar praying to God now we're at, on Broadway trying to meet up with girls and we're playing nasty music I'm not trying to judge my friend's heart but Jesus is saying to the Pharisees Hey, uh, don't be one way in public. Don't act like you're religious in public when everybody's watching. Follow God when nobody's watching. That's true religion. I mean, that's that, that's what God wants. He wants us to have. He wants to have a relationship with you at church. After church is over, not just when it's it's Wednesday night. Not just when it's Sunday morning. He wants to have a, a, a deep relationship with his children throughout the week. Can I hear a big amen? So Matthew 6, 5 goes on to say, For they love to, place, they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners, that they may be seen by men. Surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you... Speak it to his followers. When you pray, go into your inner room. And when you shut the door, pray to your father who is in that secret place. And your father who sees you in secret will reward you. So here's the question I have for you. Where is your secret place? Go ahead, type it in. Wait, no, don't type it in. That's between you and God. Do you have a secret place? A place where you go to meet with the Father? We all need a, that secret place. Whether it's a prayer closet, maybe you're walking to the park and, and you're spending time with God on a prayer walk. Maybe you're spending time with God in the morning. You wake up early in the morning and you go, you go to your backyard to spend time with God. I don't know where it's at, but do you have a secret place where you spend time with the Father? And so Jesus says, yeah, it, it's okay if you want to have a public prayer. Because Jesus prayed in public at times. But you also need to have time alone with the Father. And Jesus did that. He, he had alone time. Every morning he spent quality time with the Father. And so what is your reward? When you spend one-on-one -on -one time with the Father. I think you could come out of that prayer closet with the fire of God. We talked about that on Sunday. How do I stay on fire for God? It's through prayer. I think if, if I didn't have time with God every day in prayer, eventually my fire is going to get, is going to go out. Uh... So I want to encourage you to, to spend time with God every morning, throughout the day, at night, praying. And here's the thing. God's not going to get on your back if you miss one day of prayer. You're not going to hell if you miss one day of prayer. See, here's the, how the enemy works. He's going to try and make you feel guilty if you don't spend enough time with God in prayer. He's going to be breathing down your neck. Oh, you're not a Christian. You're not holy enough. You don't spend enough time with God in prayer. And then you go back and you ask him that question. How much time do you spend with God in prayer? See, the devil is the biggest hypocrite. So don't feel guilty if you, if you don't spend two hours in prayer. But you should spend some time with the Father in prayer. You could spend time with Jesus in prayer. Jesus said you could pray in my name. Uh, we read in the Bible that we could pray in the Spirit. And so we need to spend time with God in prayer and you'll have a reward. 
your prayers will be answered. You can't expect your prayers to be answered if you're not asking God. Ask and you shall receive, Jesus said. So there's great rewards when you spend time with God in prayer. I remember this time 11 years ago, God brought this back to mind. The, the Spirit of God brought this back to mind. We were praying, my wife and I, we were praying hard because we wanted to get a house. And the thing is, Sherry was a teacher at the time and she was pregnant with our firstborn son, Josiah. And so we needed to get this house soon. Otherwise, we would not qualify for the loan based on my income alone because I'm working as a pastor at the church and my salary wasn't enough to, to cover uh, the mortgage. So we needed Sherry's uh, salary too, working as a teacher. And so just in the nick of time, the last month, we found this house in the Thomas. And that's an answer to prayer. And we bought the house during the housing crisis. So it was a foreclosure. So we got it for a great value. It's doubled in price in 11 years. God was looking out for us. So here, here is what I'm trying to communicate. God wants to answer your prayers, whether it's a small little prayer or if it's a big prayer. God, it, He cares about you, whether it's a, a small little concern or if it's a big concern. And I'm here to say God will deliver. He's going to answer your prayer. You're going to see beautiful things happen when you pray. Amen? Can I get an amen, please? That, that means you are still with me, and that means you're, you agree. We'll, we'll go more into that later, uh, what it means to say amen. So now we're going to go to Matthew 6, 7. We read, Oh, let me ask you, what are some benefits you have received from prayer? Go ahead, type in, in the comment section, what are some benefits you have received when you have spent quality time with God in prayer? Let everybody know. All right, now I'm going to read your comments. So the Lord, the Lord Jesus says, And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. And so everybody prays. There's been studies that even people that aren't Christians, like people spend time praying to God. And so Jesus says there's these people that aren't even Christians or they don't even believe in the one true God and they, they be praying all the time. Like just think about the Muslims. They, they pray a number of times a day. And so they're... they're Discipline to spend time with Allah every day. They're, they're praying to Allah. Can't we be disciplined enough to spend quality time with our Heavenly Father every day? And, and, and prayer, yeah, it is a discipline. Like brushing my teeth is a discipline. Sometimes I don't feel like brushing my teeth at night, but I do it because I don't want to. I don't want to have cavities. I want to have nice teeth. And so sometimes I don't feel like praying, but I do it because I want to have a good relationship with God. I want to stay on fire for Him. And so the Lord Jesus says, uh, when you pray, like you don't have to go on and on and on and on. And so these heathens, they, they would pray... They would chant and say all these different prayers. And you don't have to continue to repeat yourself over and over again. There's sometimes what I'll do, guys, I will stop praying for something. And I'll say, God, you know what? You heard this prayer. I trust you now. I don't have to say the same prayer a hundred times. Like, I don't have to say, God, heal my back. I already asked that prayer. I need to stop saying, God... Heal me of this acid reflux. God's already heard that prayer. I just got to trust Him now. You know, what I, you know what I'm trying to say? He's like, sometimes we just need to say, okay, God, I trust you with this. I'm not going to talk about this no more because you already heard me and I trust that you're going to deliver. I, I believe that you're going to answer this prayer. 
you're already working behind the scenes to answer this prayer. Jesus did sometimes repeat prayers. We read in Matthew 26, 39 and, and Matthew 26, 42, twice, Jesus said, Father, let this cup pass from me. So if there's nothing wrong, if there's something heavy on your heart, it's okay to re repeat prayers. But eventually, we got to trust God. And that's what Jesus did. He's like, okay, all right, I got the answer. This cup can't pass from me. I have to go to the cross. And he, he accepted the truth. Okay, there's no other way. I need to go to the cross to rescue my people. And so there's a time when we pray, we got to just, all right, okay, I know what I need to do. So you get out, you get off the floor and you go do what God's called you to do. If you're praying to love your neighbor, there's a time you got to just, all right, I prayed that, now I just got to do that. Uh, if you're praying to forgive somebody, there's a time where you got to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to forgive this person. I'm going to choose to forgive this person. And, and God will help you to forgive even the people that have done you so wrong. I mean, raise your hand or if you have ever been hurt by somebody, by a friend, by a neighbor, we've all been hurt. It's been said, it's been said a number of times, hurt people hurt people. But we've hurt people too with our words, with our actions. And so there's a time where we got to pray and say, God, help me to be the better person. Help me to go the extra mile. Help me to turn the other cheek. Help me to love that crazy co-worker, that crazy neighbor. Help me uh, to live up to my prayers. And the Holy Spirit will help you. We don't have to do this alone. So Ecclesiastes 5, 2, if you could go there. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. In context, King Solomon is talking about being true to your word. Like, be careful what you say to God. I know people, I know people that have done this. Oh God, if you could get me out of this, I promise to go back to church. Oh God, if, if you help me this time, I promise uh, to serve you for the rest of my life. Sometimes people will try and make a deal with God. God, just do this for me this once and I promise I'll surrender my life to you. So be careful what you say to God. Be true to your prayers. Be true to your word. And so we got to remember, we don't have to say, we don't have to pray for hours straight. You could spend five, ten minutes with God in, in prayer and, and just know, okay, he, you know, I prayed enough for today. Now I need to get, get to work. And just know that God's going to be with you at work. Or wherever you need it, whatever you need to do that day. So here's a question, and this is a deep question for you. I hope you could answer this question. Can you guys hear me good? What is more important? God hearing from us or us hearing from God? Let me ask you again. What is more important? God hearing from us or us hearing from God? See, according to S.M. Lockridge, it's actually more important for us to hear from God. God already knows what's going on in our lives, but He's a good friend. He's a good counselor. We can share what's going on in our hearts. We can share with, with God what's going on in our minds. And so, yes, God wants to be a friend. He wants to hear what's going on in your life. But sometimes we make the mistake where well, we don't take time to hear what He has to say. It's been said, if you pray, don't be surprised if God talks back. Maybe he's going to talk to you 
later that day, he's going to answer your prayer through a circumstance or through a situation or through a person, through a pastor. So God, he wants to communicate. He, he, communication is it's a two-way street, kind of like relationships. How would you like to have a relationship with somebody and that person did all the talking? You guys know some people like that. So, so we want to like take time to, and it's, this is hard, is just to close our eyes and just try to hear from God. Sometimes I'll do that with my, my children. I was like, okay, since we're done praying now, we're not done actually done praying yet until we hear from God. And my wife has done this with me before too. We'll close our eyes and say nothing. And we hope to hear a word from the Father. We hope to hear that still small voice. And so, we, I want to encourage you, yes, share with God what's ever going on in your life, but also take time to hear from the Father. We read in Romans 8, 26, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We all have weaknesses, right? The Spirit of God is there to help you with your weakness. Whether it's you have anger issues, uh, issues with drugs, alcohol, name it. Fill in the blank. God can help us with our weaknesses. Depression, anxiety, whatever it may be. The Spirit of God is with us to help us with our areas of weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groaning too deep with words. So I'm telling you, when you close your eyes and pray, sometimes the Spirit of God is going to intercede for you. And the Spirit of God will give you the right words to pray. And some, some of those prayers that, that you think are coming from you are actually coming from God Himself. Act on those prayers. Live out those prayers. And some people have the gift of speaking in tongues. That's a gift of the Spirit. Not everybody has that gift. It's okay to, to pray in tongues. It's in the Bible. And I do that sometimes. Sometimes I don't know what to pray about. And I'll start praying in tongues. I don't do this every day. But every so often when I feel compelled, I will pray in tongues. I don't know what I'm praying about, but... It feels good, and I feel like I know God knows what I'm talking about. And I know that something is being done in the heavenlies. Something is actually being done here on earth. When I start praying in that, in that heavenly language. So if you have that gift of tongues, go for it. Uh, pray in, in tongues. If you don't have that gift, pray in English. Pray in Spanish. Pray in Hebrew, whatever language you have. Amen? So here's the next question I have for you. What do you need from God? Because Jesus goes on to say this in Matthew 6, 8. Therefore, do not be like the hypocrites or like them. For your Father knows the things that you need before you ask. In this manner, therefore, pray. So this is just a, a prototype. It, it's, it's an example how to pray. And, and I think the prayer that we're about to read, actually I have memorized, uh, it's something that you could pray when you run out of things to pray about. Pray the Lord's Prayer. It's a beautiful prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Deliver us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. That is a powerful prayer to learn, to memorize. So if you don't have that prayer memorized, that's your homework assignment. Get that prayer memorized. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll start praying each verse. So I'll say, Our Father in heaven, Hallowed, hallowed, great is your name. You are my Abba Father. And then and I'll start talking about God's names. 
You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. You are Je Jehovah Nisi. You are mighty in battle. You are Jehovah Shalom. You're my peace. You're Jehovah Rapha. You're my healer. Jehovah Tisikanu. You're my righteousness. I start just praying the names of God. I start praying the name of Jesus. Jesus, you're my savior. You're my friend. Jesus, you're my great deliverer. You're my healer. And so like, start praying the names of God. And, and the most popular name for God in the New Testament is Father. Jesus continued to call him Father. Our Father. That means we're all brothers and sisters. Estrella, you're my sister. Mom, this might sound kind of weird, but you're my sister. You're my big sister. Janet, you're my sister. So we're all family. It doesn't matter what nationality you are. It doesn't matter how, doesn't matter how rich or poor you are. We're, we're part of the family of God, our Father. Isn't that so beautiful? And so Jesus says that it's okay to ask God for what you need. So type in what you need right now. I want to pray for you. Let's pray for each other. And the Father knows what you need before you ask. He knows what you're going through. He loves you so much and He cares about your greatest concern. So pray for that need and trust in due time God's going to deliver and He's going to answer that prayer. Amen? And so... We're, we're called to pray to the Father and remember His name is Holy. There's a great book I want to encourage you to, to read. It's called The Power of God's Names by Dr. Tony Evans. If you want to learn more about the names of God, the titles of God, read that book. It's called The Power of God's Names by Tony Evans. That might benefit you. So here's the question right now. I'm going to just give you five titles. Uh, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. Uh, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is my peace. Je Jehovah Tisikanu, he's my righteousness. Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Jehovah Shama, you are there. And Jehovah Nisi, you're my battle. You're mighty in battle. What do you need from God right now? What do you need from your Heavenly Father right now? You need peace? You need provision? You need His righteousness. His blood is righteous. God's blood is so righteous that he can, he can make the dirtiest sinner clean and pure. He made me clean and pure. Once I put my faith in Jesus, I found true forgiveness. I found true love. What do you need? You need shalom. You need God's peace. So call on the Father and He'll give you whatever you need. He could help us to fight off temptation. He could deliver us every time. And so Jesus goes on to say that this in Matthew 6.10. Hi, Julie. Thanks for joining us. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so remember, ultimately, who are we living for? Are we living to please ourselves? Are we live, living to please God? If we're living to please God, then we're like, God, not my will, your will be done. And so that was Jesus' famous prayer right before he went to the cross. Father, not my will, your will be done. And now he's teaching his disciples, not my will, but your will be done. So this should be a corporate prayer. This should be a prayer for all believers. God, not my will, but your will be done. And, and that's a prayer of mine. God, I just want to do your will. You know what's best for my life. You have my best interest in mind. And I want to tell you that God has a beautiful plan for your life. Don't you forget it. And God, God's plan is good. He doesn't want to bring harm to you. He has a, a bright future for your life. He has a hope and a future. And so when we surrender our lives to Jesus, that's the best thing. 
when we sur surrender our lives to God, that's the best thing you could do. That's the best thing I could do. So the beginning of, our, of the Lord's Prayer, we're taught to recognize who God is. We're taught to like surrender our lives to Him. So are, are, you, are we living for ourselves or are we living for a higher purpose? And so when we say this prayer, we're saying, I'm living for God. I'm not living for myself anymore. Next we read, give us this day our daily bread. Do you take food for granted? I hope not. Uh, there's sometimes people in our world that are starving to death. That don't have enough uh, water or clean water or food. I remember when I went on my mission trip to Ecuador in 2003. So we get off the planes and then the, the head missionary says, all right, whatever you do, don't give money to the kids. Because if you give money to the kids, they're all going to surround you and you're going to have to give money to all the kids. So I was like, I didn't know what he was talking about at the time. But he just said, don't give money to the kids. Trust me on this. And so it was so hard. So I get off the plane. There's about 12 missionaries. And what do you know? You see a bunch of kids all dirty and begging for money. This is in Ecuador. And at first I'm like, uh, I didn't believe it. They look so filthy. I was like, I thought maybe they're, they're putting on a show. Maybe they got their faces real dirty and they're, they, they wore like ragged clothes. Like so they can make, maybe this is their way of making money. So they, they, they go to the airports and they, they, they're dirty and they have ripped up clothes. And I'm, like, and I'm like, man, these kids are poor. But the head missionary said, don't give them money. And I, at first I thought, I, I didn't believe what I was seeing. But then I saw their hands. And on their hands, they had all kinds of warts all over their hands. And their hands were dirty. And, and you could tell that they had some kind of skin disease. And my heart broke out to these kids. I was like, oh my. These kids are really poor. They're really hungry. And so, but we couldn't give out money because if, we, if you give one kid a dollar, like 30 of them will surround you and you got to give out money to all of them. So we live in some, we live in a world where there's still poverty. There's still people that go to bed hungry at night. So we can't take food for granted. We got to say, God, give us today our daily bread. And when we can, we try to help people. We were actually going to go feed the homeless uh, last month, but then the whole coronavirus broke out on America. So we had to pause that. So as soon as we're able to do it, we're going to go back and feed the homeless as a church. Uh, I'm not saying this to brag, but every summer, every Friday, I take a group of teens and we go downtown and we feed like 50 or more homeless people. It's our way of giving back. We're called to, to love the poor. And so we're to pray, give us today our daily bread. But I believe Jesus is saying this. Listen up, if you could. Jesus, the Lord taught us that God's word is food to our souls. And so that we need spiritual nourishment. And that's what you're doing right now. You, you, you could spend an hour doing whatever right now. You could be on Facebook, uh, looking at everybody's posts and comments. You could be watching a movie. But you decided to spend time in the Word. This is feeding your soul. So when I say, when Jesus says, give us today our daily bread, I believe we also need spiritual bread. And that's why we go to church. That's why we go to Bible studies. That's why we spend time reading the Bible every day. Because we need God's spiritual, we need spiritual bread every day. Amen? Next question is this. Uh, do you thank God for your daily bread? I hope so. Do you thank God for your job? Do you thank God for opportunities to give to those in need. Let me share another story if I could, please. 
my mom knows what happened. So we grew up real poor uh, in West Sacramento. We lived in a duplex. Uh, we, didn't, we were so poor, we didn't have a car. We had to catch the bus everywhere. Uh, my mom was a single parent. And some of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, growing up without a dad. So we didn't have a lot of money. And so one Christmas, we, we were like tied on money. And the people at my mom's work, she was working at the IRS at the time, they gave a big giant food basket for our family. I won't ever forget that. And we're, me and Abel were looking through the food, food basket. We were so excited that we had lots of food this Christmas to go in our fridge. Because usually our, our fridge was like half empty. And so that Christmas we had a lot of food to go in our fridge. Because we had some people that cared, that wanted to give back. Do you want to say hi to everybody, Jaden? Okay. My son Jaden's in the room. So, look for opportunities to give back when you can. And I, most of us here have already done that. So, I'm preaching to the choir. Let's continue to give when we see there's a need. And Matthew 6, 12 says this, And forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. What is a debt? I'm glad you asked, Julie. This is what a debt is. It's to owe something to someone. Or it means uh, something is due. So, for example, how many of you guys have ever been late like on a bill? Like it's due, like, a certain date and you forget to pay it, what happens? There's like a 20 or $30 fee. Like if it's a credit card, and you don't pay that, that credit card on time, they, the, the, there'll be a, a fee, like a 30 bucks or 20 bucks. And you're like, oh man, I, I should have paid that on time. Now I gotta pay a little extra, cause it's late. And sometimes electric companies, if you don't pay your bill on time, they'll, they'll kill the power. They'll kill the lights, you know, or there'll be no hot water if you don't pay, you know, smud on time. Thank God, uh, during the coronavirus, I hear that smud, PG&E, they're being, uh, they're having a little bit more mercy on poor families. They're not turning off, turning off the power during this time. But see, God has a lot of mercy for us. See, on the cross. Jesus paid our debt in full. He paid for my sins. He, all the sins I could think of were nailed on the cross 2,000 years ago. He paid your debt in full. So when you're saying, Father, forgive us of our debts, you're saying, Father, I received Jesus as your son. I, I received the Son of God into my life because He paid my debt in full. Is that amazing? And Jesus tells us, now that your debt has been paid in full, we are to share the good news with others. Share Jesus with people. Like, hey, you know what? Jesus loves you so much that He died for our sins. He paid our debt in full. We don't have to worry about God cutting us off someday and say, oh, I don't want to be with you anymore. You don't have to worry about God saying, you know, you're cut off from eternity because Jesus paid your debt in full. He paid my debt in full on the cross. When we put our faith in Jesus, we receive eternal life. We receive the forgiveness of sins. And so, Here's the challenge. He tells us to forgive others of their debts. Does someone owe you money? Does someone owe you respect? Does someone owe you an apology? We know people like that. We got to forgive them. We, we are to forgive how, like Christ has forgiven us. Since God has forgiven us of so much, how can I not forgive others? of their sins. So this is what Jesus is telling his disciples in this prayer. We got to be forgiving people. 
Here's the next question I have for you. Have you accepted and received the forgiveness of the Father? I think just about everybody watching has already made that confession of faith. Romans 10.9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him to life, you will be saved. Not that you might be saved, but the Scripture says you will be saved. So once you confess, Jesus is my Lord. He is my Savior. You receive eternal life. When you say that with the sincerity of your heart. Can I hear a big amen? So Jesus is challenging his disciples. I want you to be forgiving like the Father. God has showed you so much forgiveness. Now I want you to do the same. Here's the next part. This is almost, we're almost at the end. Verse 13, Jesus says this beautiful prayer. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. It's been said the biggest lie the devil has ever told is that he doesn't exist. He does exist. and But usually he's not after you. He has bigger fish to fry. But he has a lot of people on his team that are going to come your way to tempt you. To do things that go against your morals. To do things that go against the Bible. To do things that will violate your relationship with God. So Jesus says, make this your prayer. God, sometimes if, if we just need to say this prayer in the morning. God, deliver me from temptation. Deliver me from the evil one. And so how do we overcome temptation? I'm going to tell you how we overcome temptation. There's two ways you can overcome temptation. One, Jesus was tempted not once, not twice, three times. He's fasting for 40 days. The enemy comes to him and tempts him three times. And all three times... Jesus says, it is written. The Bible says, so he had God's word tucked in his heart. So he didn't give in to the temptation because I, nope, Satan, I know God's word and I'm not doing that. That would be violating the scriptures. That would be violating the word of God. It is written. Man does not live by bread alone. It is written, worship the Lord your God only. It is written, don't tempt or test the Lord your God. See, Jesus had God's word memorized. And so do you. The Holy Spirit will lead and guide you in all truth. So you have God's word in you. So the next time the the tempter comes your way, all you have to do is stand your ground. Like, no, I'm not going there, Satan. Or... Whoever is tempting you, I'm not going there. I know what God's word says. I'm supposed to love my neighbor, not hate my neighbor. I know what God's word says. I got to forgive people and not harbor anger or resentment. I know God's word tells me to be faithful. So I'm going to be faithful. I know God's word tells me to be a giving person, to be a generous person, to be a loving person. So I'm not going to be greedy. I'm not going to be hateful. The other way you overcome temptation is this way. Is by praying. We read in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you. Except what is common to all people. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted... He will provide a way out that you can endure it. So when you feel like the temptation is overwhelming you, get yourself out of that situation. And then another thing you could do is go to God and He'll give you the strength to overcome temptation. That's a promise in the Word of God. That God will He'll give you the inner strength to overcome whatever is tempting you. 
And, and just think about the temptation that you're facing right now. It's common to all people. The devil doesn't have a new playbook. He, he's been using the same temptations forever. Lust, greed, pride, lying, sexual immorality. You name it. The, the devil, he, he uses the same temptations. Maybe he's going to use a certain temptation on you more than, like maybe lust is a temptation of yours. He might come after you that way. Maybe it's anger. The, the devil is going to tempt us, but usually it's going to come through people or through thoughts. It's not going to come from him, himself. We read in Matthew 6.13, and Jesus ends this prayer by saying this, For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. What does it mean to say amen? Comment below if you have the answer. What does it mean when you say amen? What's amen? What does it mean in the Greek or in the Hebrew or in English? Did you know the word amen is one of those words that translates the same in every language? If you're a Spanish, it's amen. If you're Hebrew, it's amen. If you, you speak English, it's amen. It's one of those words that it, it's, it translates the same way. So what does it mean? Yep, so be it. Estrella is correct. And as I did a research on this word, it means so be it. And so next time you're in church or next time you hear a pastor say something that you agree with, this is what you're saying when you say amen. That is the truth. You're saying, I'm in agreement. You're saying, I stand on that word. I stand on that truth. I stand firm on that. When you say amen, you're saying, I believe it. You're saying, I rest my faith in that word or in that truth. You're saying, I receive it, pastor. When you say amen, you're saying, I receive it. You're saying, so be it. And you're saying, so let it be. That's pretty deep, huh? I remember my mom she used to have a record player. How many of you guys remember record players? We don't have those anymore. But my mom had a little record player. And she used to play this song by the Beatles. And the song went like this. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. I don't know the rest of the words. But let it be, let it be. <laughs> and so when... When you say amen, you're saying, let it be. As you say, God, I trust you. You're saying, I agree with that prayer. I agree with you, what you said, Jesus. And may what you say be done in my life. Awesome, huh? So when we say this Lord's Prayer, we're saying, God, everything you say, I agree with, Jesus. And I want that to happen in my life. I accept you. I accept your word. I accept this truth. Amen. Can I hear amen? Did Jesus... Did, oh, here's, a, here's a deeper question for you. We're almost done. Thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for being there with me. Being with us tonight. Did you know that Jesus in the book of Revelation is called the great amen? Wow. Revelation 3.14. To the angel of the Lord. That we read, and if you could go there, Revelation 3.14. To the angel of the church of Laodicea. Right. These are the words of the great Amen. It says, these are the words of God. These are the words of Jesus. These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and the true witness of God, the ruler of all creation, the, 
the ruler of the world, the ruler of the universe, the ruler of the galaxy. So Jesus is the great amen. So when you say amen, you're, you're surrendering to his lordship. You're saying, you are the king, and I'm going to serve you. So when, when we read, your kingdom come, your will be done, we're surrendering our lives to the true king. See, I don't know who you voted for, whether you, whether you voted for Trump or you voted for Hillary Clinton. I don't know if you voted for Obama or you voted for Bush. It doesn't matter if you vote for a Democrat or for a Republican. Just think about who's your favorite president of all time. See, that so-called king, he could be in office for eight years, tops. But the king of kings, lord of lords, he will be on the throne for eternity. There's no way you're going to... Anybody can knock him off his throne. He's the king of kings. He's the lord of lords. See, he's a perfect king. He's a loving king. He's a king full of grace, full of wisdom, full of truth, full of mercy. He is the king who knows you by name. Do you know, do you, does Obama know you? Does he have your phone number? Does Trump know you? Does, does he ever text message? Does he ever send you personal tweets? Does he ever send you personal text messages? Of course not. Have you ever got a personal email from President Bush? No, but Jesus is sending you messages throughout the day. Hey, I love you. Yeah, I'm the king, but you're still my friend. You're still my child. And I'm going to continue to be the king forever. Even when this coronavirus is over, whenever, whenever we get the next president or the president after that, we have a good president. And all his decisions are always good. Never once does Jesus, King Jesus say something that's out of line. He's a good king. So when you say amen, you're saying, yes, God, Jesus, I accept you. And I want to serve you. You are the Lord. You are the King of Kings. I want to share with you uh, just three more questions and we'll be done. Have you surrendered to Jesus, the Lord Jesus's, have you surrendered to Jesus's Lordship? I, I know a lot of people that will say, Jesus is my Savior, but is Jesus your Lord? It's, there's a debate. Can Jesus really be your Savior if He's not your Lord? He, he has to be both. He's, he's Lord and Savior. Have you surrendered yourself to God's Lordship, to the Father's Lordship, to the Son's Lordship, to the Holy Spirit, to His leading in your life? I think most of us have done that. And if you haven't, all you have to do is just Confess Jesus as Lord and Savior and believe that He died and rose on the third day in your promise, eternal life. So I watched this awesome movie years ago. How many of you guys have seen Bruce Almighty? Do a thumb if you've seen that movie, Bruce Almighty. So there's a, a funny scene uh, towards the end of the movie. Say so Bruce gets exhausted. He gets so tired of playing God. He doesn't want to do it no more. And he, so he, he begins to pray. A sincere, emotional prayer to God. He says, God, I don't want to be God no more. I'm done. I don't want to do this no more. I surrender. I surrender to your will. And then he sees a light and that he thinks he sees God, but it's actually a diesel truck coming right at him and he gets run, ran over by a diesel. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny, but it's beautiful at the same time. Finally, Bruce gets it that he can't be God. You can't be God. There's only one God. 
eventually we got to admit that that he there's only one lord and it's not me it's him so have you surrendered to god's will for your life i hope you have and that's something we got to do every day every day we got to choose to surrender to god's lordship we got to choose to surrender to jesus's lordship and so we're going to close now before we close do you have any questions for me Do you have any questions before we close? Feel free in the comment section to ask me any questions you have about the Lord's Prayer. I'd love to answer your questions. If I don't know the answer, I'll try to find the answer for you. But I want to pray for you. I think it would be only right that we, we close with the Lord's Prayer. So I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer. And at the end, if you could say Amen. Uh, that's your way of saying, so be that. I received that. May that happen in my life. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Beautiful is your name. Great is your name. May your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Deliver us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever and ever. And all God's people say, Amen. Love you guys. Hope to see you this Sunday morning at 10 on Facebook Live. Have a great rest of the week. Bye.